Hey guys, Chelsea from Attention to Details. Hey, and boy, is it a hot one today. We are working on a convertible, fittingly enough, although I wish I could be driving around in it right now instead of cleaning it. But I want to share with you guys how I go about cleaning convertible tops. Customers ask that we do cleaning on it and that I also do a fabric protectant on it. So I'm going to show you guys the products that I use. They're very uh, readily available on a retail level. You can pick them up off of Amazon. I think even some um, auto stores like Pet Boys, auto, uh, Advanced Auto, they may carry this brand. Um, phenomenal company, really fantastic products. It's what I use for pretty much every convertible top uh, that comes through my doors. So I want to share with you guys my prep process and how I clean and protect convertible tops. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, let's take a quick gander at the condition of the convertible top. You can see we've got a lot of dirt, debris, even some pet hair. It's been a minute since this has been really cleaned. You can see we've just got a lot of buildup of kind of dirt and debris that has slid down the glass. So what we're going to do first and foremost before we hit any sort of moisture to this, we're going to vacuum it just like you would uh, for any sort of fabric on an interior. We're not going to use a drill brush, but we're going to use I have my rigid vacuum over here, forgive me for the mess, I'm working in a condensed space, so I have a, give me one second, a brush attachment that I actually put uh, onto it, and what I'll do is I will vacuum with this, so let's get this puppy clean. So you can see just by vacuuming alone, we made a big difference. Even the mud and the bird poop that was on the top, we were able to vacuum that up um, just essentially as like dry soiling like you would for uh, any sort of shampoo job that you're doing on the interior vehicle. You want to get up as much loose soil, dry soil as possible before you wet it, less chance of creating kind of wicking or ripple effect. Now here we're going to definitely have to be very careful. The glass, you don't want to get too, too crazy and also around these seals. But what we're going to essentially do now is bring in our hose. I am going to use a pressure washer and I want to just give you a warning. When you're using a pressure washer, you don't want to come too close because what will happen is you'll kind of leave like a zebra effect in the fabric. So you want to keep it at a safe distance. More than anything, you're just using it to kind of wet it so that you can agitate with your cleaner and your brush and then rinse it off. You don't, at this point, because we've removed the dry soiling, we shouldn't need the pressure washer to, you know, blast stuff out. We're more than anything rinsing our solution off. The hard part, you know, the majority of the dirt is done. We just got like some sap, some dried stuff that's on there. So again, hold it at a safe distance. I'd even say further than this from the, the fabric so that way you don't have kind of like score lines in the fabric because that will dry that way. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the two cleaners that I'm gonna be using. Forgive me again of the mess, I'm just kind of trying to punch this out quickly. So we're gonna be using two products from 303. These are my absolute favorite when it comes to uh, affordable products for cleaning uh, tanu covers, convertible tops. You can use products from Ragtop, but I just find that these are a little bit more affordable and just as effective. Uh, Meguiar's even sells one that you can pick up uh, at a retail level, and I've used that in the past, the, the soft top cleaner, the convertible top cleaner. It's a really great cleaner, but essentially you want to use a convertible top appropriate cleaner. You don't want to necessarily use an APC because sometimes that can leave residue and staining and wicking. And then once that is dry, we'll wash, we'll scrub, we'll rinse, we'll let it dry completely. Then you come in with your 303 Fabric Guard. This stuff is fantastic. I'm gonna try to apply it later on in the day once the sun has kind of let it dry. I'm gonna show you how to apply it. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you water behavior because it has to cure for 24 hours before you wet it and the customer's gonna be taking this tonight. But let me just tell you, fantastic water beading. I've had it on, on vehicles where I was ceramic coating it. I had a soft top Jeep. I used this stuff on it. This stuff beaded perfectly. 
It did not go through the soft top. So this is a fantastic product. You can use this outside. You can, they don't recommend it for interiors of your vehicle. This is more for like umbrellas, uh, soft tops, things like that. Um, outdoor seating that you have, really great affordable product, more durable than Scotchgard, perfect for outdoors. So these are the two products that we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead and get our top wet and we're gonna clean it. After hosing it down, I'm gonna go ahead and use a soft wheel brush. You can use like a tire brush. Essentially, you just want one that's not gonna leave a lot of lint behind. Unfortunately, this one did. And it's a simple solution. You just kind of go behind after it's dried and vacuum it up again. But you can see I'm going in one direction and then the opposite direction just to make sure I get in all the directions of the fabric. Rinse it off till you have no residue and it's as simple as that for cleaning. All right, so we've got everything washed, scrubbed, rinsed. Now we're gonna focus on the rest of our vehicle, get that done out of the way. We don't have to use necessarily soap, you know, from the vehicle. We can just, we'll foam it up like we would normally, but if any gets on the top, it's not gonna damage it. We'll just rinse it off and then when everything is dried, we're just gonna let that kind of air dry. That way, you know, it dries a little bit more naturally. You can use a blow dryer or a blower or something like that to accelerate it, but um, it's so hot out today, it's gonna dry in no time. So we're gonna go ahead, wash the rest. I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll bring you back when we're kind of done and show you what it looks like dried and then we'll apply our fabric top, our fabric guard. All right guys, so we've got everything washed. We've pulled it into the garage to dry off because it's just getting a little bit too hot and humid out there. So sometimes when you are doing a convertible top, you may find that after washing or brushing it off with your brush, that sometimes the brush can leave fibers on the top and it kind of looks like this. So what you want to do Sorry for the shakiness. I'm getting all tangled up in my hoses. So I just have a dry or a stiff brush and just come in here and you can use a brush like this to clean with. I just like using a softer one, but the flag tips sometimes can shed like this. So it just depends on the tools that you have in your arsenal. Sometimes brushes like this, they can score a little bit um, when it's wet. So, but when it's dry, I'll just come in and kind of agitate all that lint fluff the fibers it knocks it up and then give me one second you grab your brush attachment on your shop back And just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna to try to keep it short, but you can just see we were able to agitate the lint and get that up because I don't wanna scratch the hose on the car. I always try to keep it kind of lifted away from the paint. Um, I need two hands to do that. But essentially that's what you would do if you just find that you have lint, agitate with a stiff brush, vacuum it up, you should be good to go. But you wanna make sure you remove as much loose soil lint, things like that before you apply your 303 fabric guard. So we're gonna get this vacuumed and finish our interior and then we'll work on our fabric. All right, part. so you can see everything came up nicely with the vacuum job. Top is for majority dry. We've just got some of the outer edges that are a little bit damp. So you can see, we'll just do a quick walk around. Maybe the right occasional piece of lint or dust flying into it, but it's manageable. I had one little spot that hadn't come up, so I just took some F-bomb on a rag and went over it and just kind of touch spotted it and it, that will dry quickly but that's a quick way like if you find that you missed a spot with your cleaner and everything's dry you can just touch you know spot clean it you don't want to spray your fabric with a cleaner spray your cleaner onto the microfiber and just kind of blot it and uh, you should be fine you shouldn't have any wicking but everything cleaned up perfectly it looks fantastic now we're just going to lock in this condition with the 303 fabric guard but since it's just ever so slightly damp, I am inside right now, just because rain is in the forecast. We're gonna go ahead, utilize our time, we're gonna work on this interior, and then by the time we're done with that, we can apply with our 303 fabric. All right, guys, we are on the tail end of this detail. Inside is done. Outside, my sealant is setting up. We're gonna work on fabric top while the sealant is just finishing up. So we've got our 303 fabric guard. 
what we're gonna do you want to make sure that you do this when the weather cooperates you don't want rain on it for a minimum of 12 hours ideally 24 um, if so you might have some um, rippling from the product you might have uh, just the water performance isn't gonna be there it, it might just wash off so what I would say if, if it's gonna rain and the customer you know is passionate about having it then just reschedule have them come back um, and do it another day because you know this stuff it's not hard to use at all but there are certain conditions that you just want to follow the directions properly so I just have a microfiber here and what you want to do give the bottle a good shake we're gonna open it up you want it on the spray setting not on the stream you want to apply this kind of an overlapping um, matters you don't want to go super super heavy because it can kind of dry flashed so you don't want to like go super heavy um, hold it you know at a distance but you want to kind of overlap your sprays just ever so slightly you might notice that there's like little bubbles in the solution especially just because I shook it but you might notice as it's drying there might be some light bubbles just kind of come behind with a microfiber and I'll show you what I'm talking about we'll come in here I'm gonna outline if I can and just kind of use the microfiber to try to keep stuff off of the paint. Right, so we've applied that to half. Let me kind of pull you in close and show you what I'm talking about. Oh, sorry about that, my tripod. But you can see, like, right here, there's like a little bubble. You just kind of pop that. So just kind of come in. If you see bubbles, you can just pop them. Just because they will kind of dry that way. So you can see it's just a nice fine mist. And then if it's sunny day, pull it out into the sun, let that air dry but you definitely want to give that the 12 hours. I'm going to put you back up and do the other side. And yeah, it is thundering, so do as I say, not as I do. All right, so let me just pull you in close and show you what that looks like. So you can just see we've got kind of a fine mist all over it. You don't need to brush it in or anything. Just kind of let that dry. If you get any on glass or paint, I just get a nice plush microfiber. Heck, you can just use water alone. Just have a bottle of H2O or a damp microfiber and just get that up. It's not gonna damage it, but you don't wanna let that like dry and cure completely. So just go around all of your glass when you're done, and I'll just use that microfiber that I used to flip it over to a clean side, and we'll just kind of go around all of our glass. And then the reason I let my wax set up is I still kind of have a layer of wax on there, so when I buff that off, that should come off as well. And it's as simple as that. We're gonna let that dry, and uh, Pray that the rain comes and goes before the customer comes to pick it up. But it's super, super simple to clean and protect your convertible top. Be able to get, you know, anywhere from, I would say, four to six months protection with the fabric guard. Uh, if you properly maintain it, you don't necessarily, necessarily take it through like an automatic car wash with the brushes and the high pH soaps. But if you're just using like standard dish soap, 
or even if you just use a dry vacuum when you wash it and just vacuum it off, you know, do a quick rinse, you should get, you know, four to six months of protection, maybe even longer out of this stuff. I've had some say they get upwards of a year, uh, especially on like their outdoor umbrellas and, and seats and things like that. So fantastic product. Here is the system for any of you that are wanting to do this for yourself at home or if you want to offer this as an upgrade to your customers. Very affordable, excellent company. All their stuff I absolutely love. Especially if you have um, like a faded black uh, tan you cover, you can also use the 303 Aerospace Protectant before you put on the fabric guard to restore the black color. Lock that in with the fabric guard. It's a fantastic way to clean, restore, and condition. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We've got some cool videos coming out in the next future. Thanks for putting up with my sweaty mess. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have a great night.